Worldwide, nations rely significantly on aircraft carriers for their offensive and defensive capabilities. Aircraft has always been crucial to maintain international security and helping the U.S. military display its might abroad. The Gerald R. Ford class is the U.S. Navy's future warship, with 10 aircraft carriers planned. Around 75 planes are carried by this largest aircraft carrier in the world. However, do you know where it stores them? Let's explore. The USS Gerald R. Ford, the first of the Ford class of warships built for the U.S. Navy, is an aircraft carrier. On July 22, 2017, the USS Gerald R. Ford received its official commission. Construction of each unit cost around $13 billion. While $37.3 billion was spent on research and development for the class. The USS Gerald R. Ford is the largest warship in the world at 1,106 feet long and 112,000 tons of displacement. The USS Gerald R. Ford is equipped with several surface-to-air missiles, such as the RAM-116 and RAM-7 Sea Sparrow, as well as M2 machine gun strikes fighters like the Boeing FA-18EF Super Hornet, the F-18's electronic warfare variant, the EA-18G Growler, other support aircrafts like the Grumman C-2 Greyhound, the Northrop Grumman E-2 Hawk, the Sirovsky SH-60 Sea Hawk helicopters, and a variety of uncrewed aerial combat vehicles are all included in this mix. A complement of some of America's most cutting-edge aircraft, notably the Lockheed Martin F-35C Lightning II is also planned. If not already implemented, to be given to the USS Gerald R. Ford, where do they keep them though? Let's get started. The United States presently leads the rest of the world with 11 of its enormous floating runway operational. Up to 90 aircrafts may typically be carried on most modern aircraft. In most cases, the vessel offers the most versatility and technical capabilities in the fleet. On the flight deck, some of these are prepared for takeoff while others are stowed in the hangar bay below. The hangar, which occupies about two-thirds of the ship's length and resembles a garage, is where airplanes are maintained in addition to spare parts, fuel tanks, and a variety of other essential equipment safety stored in the decks. Additional storage spaces are provided to house parts without hazel. One of the key features of this overall architecture is the elevators located on Hagar Bay. The construction of these elevators is crucial since any flaws could result in a devastating weakness in the vessel's outer structure. The elevator floor serves as a convenient section of the entire deck when not being lowered and lifted. Even in the hangar bay parking operation, extreme attention is used. But how can they keep so many aircrafts on board in working order? Please do not be mistaken, we are not referring to the spirit called board. When we say that an Aouja board is an answer to the query. It's a surprisingly easy technique used by aircraft handlers since World War II to administer aircraft board efficiency. On a scale of 116 inches to 1 foot, the Ouija board is a miniature duplicate of a carrier flight deck. With this replica, every movement and location is recorded and monitored using the small model aircraft on the board. There is an Ouija board on the flying deck control. Since World War II, the aircraft handling officer has recorded aircraft movement and management on board the flight deck and hangar bay using a physical tabletop with a scale aircraft template. Only 20 of the 90 fixed-wing aircrafts the USS Gerald R. Ford class can accommodate can fit on the flight deck. Even with the decreased number, an aircraft carrier's flight deck is so cramped that additional preparation is needed to move aircrafts around safely. There is a deployable ship integration multi-touch system, which is a lab-based Ouija board for processing and operating both aircraft and support equipment. Because of this, most aircrafts are kept on the ship's deck in a hangar bay. Before launching the aircraft, the maintenance staff can test the engines in the hangar's engine testing area, which is close to the carrier's stern. Aircraft carriers are highly specialized engineering feats, but so are other vessels that may be smaller in scale, but play no less of a role in the defense mission. For example, the USNS First Lieutenant Jack Loomis is a logistic cargo vessel acting as the flagship for the Maritime Pre-Positioning Ship Squadron 3. It is powered by a two-store quartzite workspot diesel engine. It features a mobile landing platform for military hovercraft called the Landing Craft Air Cushion or ICAC. It is attached to the USNS Bob Hope, a ship used for transporting vehicles on a skin-to-skin -skin basis. It uses built-in sizable mooring fenders while decked in a skin-to-skin -skin operation. Because of these qualities, the Mont Feed Point may serve a variety of military missions. Cargo is also stopped from the vast staging area through a side port ramp. 
Now that we have seen how they store jets and planes in an aircraft carrier, aren't you curious about the jets and their speciality for which the US Navy is investing so much for their maintenance and storage? Based on the McDonnell Douglas FA-18 Hornet, the Boeing FA-18E and FA-18F Super Hornet are twin-engine, carrier-capable, multi-role fighter aircrafts. The larger and more modern FA-18C and D Hornet derivatives are the single-seat FA-18E and tandem-seat FA-18F. The Super Hornet can transport air-to-air -air missiles and air-to-surface armaments and features an internal 20mm M61 rotating gun. Up to five external fuel tanks can carry extra gasoline, and an external air-to-air -air refueling system can convert the aircraft into an airborne tanker. An American carrier-based electronic warfare aircraft called the Boeing EA-18G Growler is a modified version of the two-seat FA-18F Super Hornet. The Northrop Grumman EA-6B Prowlers were replaced by the EA-18G in the U.S. Navy. Northrop Grumman principally provided Northrop Grumman's electronic warfare capability for the Growler. The EA-18G went into production in 2007 and was operationally used by the U.S. Navy by the end of 2009. Twelve EA-18Gs were also purchased by Australia and the Royal Australian Air Force began using them in 2017. The twin-engine high-wing Grumman C-2 Greyhound is a freight plane used by the U.S. Navy to transport supplies, mail and people to and from aircraft carriers. The main objective is onboard carrier delivery, or COD. The aircraft gives carrier attack groups essential logistics support. The aircraft is mainly used between carriers and shores based to ferry mail, passengers, and high priority cargo like jet engines and specialized supplies. American single seat, single engine, all weather stealth multi role combat aircraft designed to carry out air superiority and strike missions are known as the Lockheed Martin F 35 Lightning II. It can also perform electronic warfare and other intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance capabilities. With Northrop Grumman and Bay Systems as principal partners, Lockheed Martin is the primary F-35 contractor. If these facts haven't already blown your mind, what follows will undoubtedly do so. There is a secret time capsule on board the ship, which is another intriguing feature. On July 11, 2013, the time capsule, a long-standing naval custom, was welded into a compact space above the flight deck. The time capsule's contents, which reportedly include sandstone from the White House, Navy coins and aviator wings from the ship's first commanding officer, were chosen by President Ford's daughter, Susan Ford Bales. They were subsequently flattened by the extraordinarily heavy engineering when the main flight deck island was dropped above them. In response, ship workers raised the island once more, enabling the movement and preservation of the artifacts. After that, the flattened pieces were put inside a time capsule that had been welded into the space that would eventually house the ship's flight deck. All commemorative objects except the sandstone were flattened, but otherwise unharmed. A plaque is also connected to the time capsule. The plaque advises against opening it until the carrier has undergone its midlife refueling and overhaul, or around 25 years after it's first entered the service. It's undoubtedly stunning, no? Uncertainty surrounds what the future holds for her, but you can know that her staff won't shriek their responsibilities. That concludes today's video. I sincerely hope you all liked it. Did you realize that the weapons the ship possesses are the very weapons that can destroy the ship? What do you think about it? Do share your thoughts in the comment section. Remember to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss new videos. Also, don't forget to like and share our video. Till then, see ya!